Alright, let's be honest everyone, some roles just have it easier than others. Sure, we act like that's not the case in our matchmaking games when we're flaming our teammates for performing poorly, but at the end of the day, all roles just aren't created equal. Some of them are easier than others. That's why today, we're going to be settling it once and for all by indisputably exposing the easiest roles as well as sympathizing with the hardest roles in the game. This list may not be what you want to hear, but it's what you need to hear. Speaking of what you need to hear, you suck at Valorant. Well, you suck at Valorant right now. That's okay though, because we're going to get you caught up to speed really fast with our brand new post commentaries over at Skillcapped. We've heard your feedback. Some of you don't want full game commentaries, so we've made them as time friendly for you as possible. Now our Radiant coaches have created a new format where they'll break down the most important parts from each of their matches and why they made the decisions they did in the moment. This is the best way to get inside the mind of a Radiant player and truly hear how they think during each match. Remember, all of the content on the site is in forced by a rank improvement guarantee, so you're totally welcome to check these out to see if they'll even help you. Maybe this is what you needed to take the leap into higher elo. Only one way to find out. We'll see you there. Starting out with the easiest role to play though, come on guys, you already know, it's controller. Before you lose your mind, I just wanted to admit that I myself am a controller main. I love playing controller, and if my teammates were good at matchmaking, I'd gladly play controller more often. But you see, there lies the problem. The other roles just aren't as easy to play. I'd rather have someone who is a complete noob play controller than put them on any of the more difficult roles in the game. Disagree with us? Well, let's just say there's a reason Sentinels put Shroud on controller when he was being introduced to competitive play. Not enough for you? Maybe some of you don't remember, but when Nitro came over to Valorant from Counter-Strike, 100 Thieves put him on Omen as well. It's not because either of them are bad players, it's just because controller is the easiest to pick up. That being said, there are still some really awesome concepts that most players don't even understand how to utilize on controller. For example, what do you do with your smokes when your team isn't executing? Do you just let them sit in your pocket? Well, not always. Sometimes you're going to want to place some lurk smokes. What about when you're in a pinch? Well, a good controller might throw down a smoke on site to play around him. The crazy thing about smokes is that they can be used to manipulate sight lines anywhere on the map. That's pretty awesome when you think about it. You can create angles players have never seen before and really make for some uncomfortable situations for your opponents if you're good at it. That being said, just because the skill ceiling is high doesn't make the skill floor any higher. Controller is definitely the easiest role to pick up in Valorant and this list will treat it as such. Time for our second easiest role in Valorant. This one is likely going to rustle a few jimmies. We've got the Duelist. While Duelist is likely one of the most mechanically challenging roles, it's also in many ways the most forgiving role. What's that? You mispositioned on Reyna? Well, lucky for you, most agents would just get traded, but you're actually able to dismiss away if you get a kill. It's crazy, we can already hear the duelist mains typing furiously on their keyboards. But be honest with me, why do you think duelist is the most played role in Valorant? Duh, because it's the most fun. Well, yeah, but it's the most fun because it's the easiest to get kills on. Trust me, if every player could effortlessly drop 30 kills on Cypher, they'd be doing it. But it's just harder to carry on him. It's not all all bad though. While Duelist is one of the easiest roles to play in the game, this is probably the role with the highest skill ceiling, both mechanically and strategically. A good Duelist player is someone who is really excellent at playing off their teammates and using all resources available to them to help create value for their team. Unfortunately for us, because this is one of the easiest roles to play, that's not what you're seeing most of the time. Generally, what you're seeing is no com Duelist players who are lurking and just trying to rack up as many kills as they can so they can complain about how bad their teammates were after the match. Moving on to our third easiest role to play in Valorant, we'll be talking about Initiators. Truthfully, the skill ceiling is pretty high for all of these roles, but one of the things that makes Initiators pretty easy is how much value they can actually provide for very little effort. If you shoot a dart on the wall as Sova, that thing is going to clear a lot of area, and it really didn't require that much skill on your part. Sure, you can learn cool lineups, but you don't need them. Just shoot the dart at a wall and it'll do its thing. Same thing goes for Fade or Sky. All you gotta do to get value is use your drones, and your teammates ideally will follow behind in. The difficulty in playing these agents is generally going to be actually getting your teammates to follow up off your utility. Whether that's by communicating more or timing your abilities better, sometimes this can be an uphill battle. Battle. But the best part about Initiator is you don't even really need your teammates to follow up. You can kind of just do it yourself sometimes. Just because Breach is supposed to flash for a teammate doesn't necessarily mean he can't flash for himself. We all know KO can play like a duelist just as much as a support. One of the things that sets Initiators just a bit higher than duelists though is that they don't have those same defensive resources as duelists. They can't just misposition and get away scot-free. They'll get punished for poor positioning, so you need to play much more carefully. So although they can get value easily, they require a lot more disciplined to play well. One role that is pretty similar is actually Sentinel. Just by placing down your tripwires or sage wall, you 
actually get quite a bit of value. Just while being able to hold map control while scrolling on TikTok is actually one of the easiest things to do in the game. That being said, the reason Sentinels find themselves so much higher on this list than the other two roles is because to get value past that is actually quite difficult. A good Sentinel player knows how to read the map and how to position because of that. They know what setups to use and where to use them. They know how to read the enemy team's movements and what the enemy team's win condition is. Extend this even further, a good Sentinel player knows how to lurk on offense and play off of their team's pressure. They know where to find openings and how to win those 1v1s when they get them. Sure, you can play Killjoy and set up your turret and mollies, but you're very rarely going to carry a game from sitting back and just hoping they come to your site. Similarly to Initiator, Sentinels provide a certain amount of base value, but that value is only helpful if you know how to play around it. As KO, I can just flash through a smoke and take a fight if I want. As Killjoy, you don't have those same aggressive tools to play off of, and you need to be much more clever to get things accomplished. As we mentioned, all of these roles have a massive skill ceiling. While writing this guide, I was actually just thinking about how much depth is in this game. All agents have some really awesome things you can do with them that push the limits of the game. You can put thousands of hours into one agent and still be learning new things about them. A great example of this is all of those Yoru content creators who are still coming up with new flashes for new situations. We were actually so fascinated by this actually that we reached out to a couple of agent one tricks to have them teach you everything they know about their agents. Over at Skillcapped, all of those courses are available for literally every single agent in the game so you can learn from the players with thousands of hours on that agent. This is by far the fastest way to get caught up to speed in Valorant, or even to help you push your game to the next level. One reason we speak so highly as well is because we are the only service that offers a rank up guarantee, and we do this because we know we can help you rank up. If you don't, we'll give you your money back. We know it sounds enticing. If you're interested, we've got a link in the description below for you. That's going to do it for us here today though. As always, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.